Today we're going to look at some epic visual effects tips in DaVinci Resolve. If you've been getting into Fusion and you just want to work more efficiently, make your effects look a little bit better, this is the perfect video for you. Stick around, we're going to have a lot of fun. Hey Gregory, when do you think you might cough up that $20 you owe me? You got a lot of nerve asking me that, Jimothy. I'll tell you what, I'll give you that 20 just as soon as pigs fly. How about that? Huh. Well, ain't that the darndest? Well, that thing just popped a squat square in the center of your field there, Brandon. I believe you is correct, Jimothy. And according to common law, seeing as how that's my parcel of land, I got myself a space pig. Much obliged. Say, you wouldn't be open to splitting that otherworldly porker with me? Seeing as I was here with you when it done happened, I got me a fierce hankering for some bacon all of a sudden. 20 bucks, and I'll let you haul it to my kitchen. Deal. Sucker out your mouth. Out of this world. Delicious. Mama taught you nothing. Mm -hmm. So here I have one of our comps brought up here in Fusion. This is just in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. I just have our page navigation turned off so we have a little more room. And yeah, kind of fun. We have the pig smashing into the ground and a big dust cloud coming up. And I think it looks pretty fun. This is pretty, pretty cool. So this is a good time, and there's quite a few nodes here for this composite. If you want a full walkthrough of all of these nodes, let me know in the comments, and I'll make another video on that. But we're going to focus on a few tips that might help you in your comps. Tip number one, color management in Fusion. Now this could be its own huge video. Long story short, there's a couple things you want to pay attention to when it comes to color management in Fusion. One is your input color space. So if I were to turn everything off, this is shot in Blackmagic Raw and brought in in Blackmagic Film Gen 5, and it's very flat log footage. And no matter how much work we do in the color page, we're not going to be able to see that color graded footage here in Fusion because the stuff that we do in Fusion comes before what happens in the color page. So what do we do? Well, what we need to do is approximate what our color grade is going to look like here in Fusion so that we can make some informed decisions on how bright and dark and saturated and all of those things our elements need to be in the comp. One of the ways that we can do that is with a LUT on our viewer. In the upper right hand corner, there's this little lattice thing. This is our LUT. See? If I hit this drop down button, we can select any of our installed LUTs. And under Blackmagic Design, for me, I can go to Gen 5 Film to video and turn that on. And that's going to give a pretty good approximation of what the color space transform is going to be doing. And it's going to be pretty darn close to what the corrected image will look like. And so I can get things probably 80, 90% there without barely any effort here in the fusion page. And I can kind of estimate what the color grade is going to look like. This is much better than flying blind, compositing this, and then getting into the color page and having to go back and adjust things here in Fusion and then go back to the color page. It's just, we don't want to do that. So we turn on our LUT and that gives us a pretty good idea of what things will look like after they're color graded. Now, the LUT you're going to use is dependent on the type of camera you're using, what color space you're working in and all of that. That's probably a topic for another video. The other thing when it comes to color management and that kind of thing is it's a good idea, if you can, to try and work in linear color space. What the heck does that mean? I will. <laughs> kinda, kinda though. Well, really oversimplifying it. If you were gonna make a graph from the darkest parts of an image to the brightest parts of the image, like this, like a little line graph, 
In the real world, it looks like this. Black things are black, white things are white, and something that's halfway up between black and white is halfway brightness between black and white. But when you shoot in a log profile, it can look something more like this. And so if something is bright, it might make it darker. If something is really dark, it might make it lighter. And in between, it's just willy-nilly whatever the color profile wants to do which is fine unless you're trying to mix something in to make it look like it's part of the shot in a realistic way. Because let's say you want something mid brightness, you might put it here, that would go here, but everything that is like middle brightness in our video footage is actually more at like 70% brightness instead of 50. And then the things that you're trying to mix in, they might have their middle brightness at 50. And so things just don't match. And you have to do a lot of messing around to try and get things to match up better. So instead of doing that, what we want to do is change the colors in our log footage to be linear. We're basically taking this color curve and kind of reversing it and then setting it back to normal. So something that's 50% brightness is 50% on the signal. This is kind of oversimplifying it, but it will totally do for what we're talking about here. So I'll bring this up here on the left viewer. Here is our footage in log, and then we're going to use a color space transform to change this from log into linear, which looks whack bat crazy, crazy. And so you might look at that and go, wow, this is way worse. Why would I do that? <laughs> You can think of converting something into linear, like converting it into compositing mode, all right? You don't view things in compositing mode. You just let Fusion think about things in compositing mode. And what you're viewing is actually going to be changed from compositing mode into viewing mode, okay? So this is like compositing mode. Really bright things are really bright, dark things are really dark, and in between it just kind of scales linearly. Looks terrible on the screen. But at the end of our node graph, we reverse this. So I'll hit one on the keyboard. And now we're taking that linear image and we're putting that curve back into it and making it a log image again, which we can color grade in the color page. And we can approximate that by kind of viewing this under our preview let. Now, if I take this color space transform at the end and the color space transform at the beginning, and I turn these off and on, we obviously see a difference in our elements here, but our footage looks exactly the same. That's because we're reversing the curve that the camera put into it, and then we're putting it back. So it's not really changing the image at all, it's just kind of putting it into linear color space. So we can take something like these elements that are Rec. 709, they're not shot in a log space, and we can put those into linear space so that we can mix these together in a way that appears realistic. Our footage is way too contrasty and way too bright, and guess what? So are the elements that we're putting in. And again, we aren't supposed to view it this way. This is in magical compositing mode. And once we switch from linear back into log, look at that. These additional elements look like they belong right there in that log signal. It's sort of like translating both of these images to a common language and then translating that language into whatever language we want. Although it works slightly better than that because language translation has the telephone kind of effect and this one's more science-y. Science, you say? So if you want to learn more about why we should work in linear and everything, let me know. I will make a video on that. If that's good enough for you, then just call then just call it good. But there's a little bit about color management inside of Fusion. Make sure that you pay attention to that if you're going to be doing any kind of visual effects. It's pretty important. By the way, if you're brand new to Fusion, make sure to check out the Fusion Survival Guide. It's a video course hosted by yours truly, and we talk about the essential tips for working in Fusion, things that will save your life. Maybe, I don't know if it's that dramatic, but it is really helpful if you're somewhat new to Fusion. You can get that for free. There's a link right here or in the description. Let's get back to the tips. Next tip is stabilize your footage or match move your elements that you're adding to your footage. Because if they slip and one's moving and one isn't, that's gonna be a dead giveaway. So for this footage, it's on a tripod, but it's kind of windy. And if we zoom in here, we'll see that this is actually moving a little bit. There's a little bit of wiggle. Now, it's possible nobody's going to notice this, but if our footage is wiggly and the elements that we're adding to it aren't, then they're going to slip. And so we have two options. We can track the movement of this footage and apply it to anything that we add to the footage, or we can just take this little movement out. Now, because this is just kind of a little bit of a shaky camera, it's not an actual camera move, uh, it's probably easier just to stabilize the footage. 
And you can stabilize the footage a lot of different ways. The way that I did it on this shot was I took a tracker and tracked a building that was out in the distance, just a little high contrast piece of this building. And I made sure to track something that's sort of close to where we would be putting our elements, right? Something that moves about that far. Because if I were to do something like track these overalls, that's going to move differently than this background just because of parallax and that kind of thing. But we track that and you can apply that stabilization in a few different ways. But the way that I did it was made a transform node and then went over to center, went down to connect to tracker one steady position. And that's just going to link this to this tracker here. I don't even have to have this tracker hooked up to anything. I can just kind of push this off to the side and I can use this tracker data to steady things in my transform. Now, if we view this image after it goes through the transform, we'll see it's totally locked down because we're taking that same movement from the tracker and we're basically just reversing it, which steadies the shot. Once that's steady, you can put anything else that's steady on it and those will line up. And then if you want to, you can add some camera shake and that kind of thing. Third, epic VFX tip. If you're gonna use something like magic mask, or if you're going to track anything, select anything, make some masks, that kind of thing, it might not be a bad idea to render out a mat. Now, what does that mean? Anytime that you use magic mask or you draw your own mask or you do roto or anything, what it's really doing is it's making a mat. A mat is just basically an alpha channel, or maybe it's an image with an alpha channel. Sometimes it's a black and white image, but either the alpha channel or the image itself sometimes will look like this. It'll be black and white. White means opaque and black means transparent. And so what this is, is this is a map that we can use to control the transparency or the strength of any node. And so by default, Magic Mask just kind of cuts out the input image based on the selection and you can track it back and forth and it will animate it from there we can put this over whatever we want i can just merge this over a background you know we can have this background over black or red or whatever we want because it's transparent right because this image is transparent now it's really tempting to take this image itself that you made from magic mask and just merge it over something and keep going. And that will probably work fine on smaller, simpler things. But I've gotten in the habit of any time that I make something like this, I just take a couple minutes and I render it out to an image sequence. Because one, Magic Mask can sometimes tweak out and mess with your mat if it's just using that Magic Mask. Two, Sometimes if you change your resolution or your timeline settings, or if you change uh, from proxies or away from proxies, that can mess up your Magic Mask and it will reset it. Not to mention that Magic Mask has to think every frame unless you have it cached, in which case you might as well just render it out to a sequence anyway. And so what I like to do is after this Magic Mask node, I'll hit shift spacebar and type saver, S-A-V-E-R. And what a saver node does, is it bakes out whatever you feed into it as an image sequence. Very high quality image sequence with alpha and everything that you need. It basically makes a exact copy of this, but it's rendering it out as a sequence of images. So you basically open it up like footage instead of having Fusion generate this frame every single frame. And so you just browse and you create a file name. You can just make a new folder and we'll just call this, you know, Matt. We'll just call this magic mask and hit save. Usually these settings are just fine as default. And then you can go up to fusion and say, render all savers. And once you hit that, that's gonna go through all of the frames in your comp and it's gonna save whatever you have connected to this saver node out to those images. Then you can use a loader, shift spacebar, L-O-A-D. And I already have a sequence made here called hat mat. And you hit open. And look, now we have that sequence rendered out from Magic Mask, and it doesn't have to think about Magic Mask every single frame. Definitely worth the, you know, 40 seconds or whatever it takes to make this image sequence, because then you have this saved out, doesn't need to think about it anymore, and you can reuse it. And so what I did was take this hatmat.exr, and I choked the mat a little bit and blurred it a little bit, and put that through a series of nodes to help make a mat for the sky, and that's where our explosions and everything are going to show up. So we're holding out this hat 
so that everything appears behind the hat. Mats like this are a really essential part of compositing. And literally, if you understand mats, you will be so much better at compositing. If you want to do yourself a favor and you're learning VFX, get really good at mats. Over my time being a VFX artist, I've really started to appreciate the beauty of a good mat. Because look at this, I can not only have this mat, but I can put this into multiple different places. I can reuse it and I can change the mat afterward and blur it and do all the things that I might need to do. And it runs really, really fast because I don't have to think about Magic Mask every frame. It's just a smart way to work, man. Just smart. I've heavily researched this. I know what it is. Last epic visual effects tip for Fusion is that you can output multiple different kinds of media outs. Now, what that means is that media out one, that is just the video output that's going to be sent to the timeline. But if you make another media out, you can plug various things into it. And so I've just plugged in our visual effects elements here. And you can use this to select different parts of your composition in the color page. Because check this out. What this is really doing is rendering out a map that is just our effects minus our foreground. And what happened was I actually had a little bit of trouble matching these colors, even though I did my color management well. Sometimes colors just be crazy. Sometimes this LUT isn't totally perfect. And after you put your final look on, things still might look a little bit off. And so what I did was in the color page, you can right click anywhere here and say add source. And what that will do is add this second media out. So this is media out two from the fusion page. And I can just plug that into my matte input for this color node and check this out. I can make an adjustment just to these elements without affecting anything else because I have this perfect mat that's coming from the fusion page. It's freaking next level. It's so cool to be able to have that control afterwards, even after you're done compositing. So yeah, there's the final composite looking pretty sweet. Again, if you want me to walk through this whole thing in detail, let me know in the comments below. And if you want more life-saving tips for working in Fusion, don't miss the Fusion Survival Guide. That's a course that we have available where I go through my essential tips, my like need to know awesome stuff that will help your life in Fusion be so much better. There's a link to that right here. You can get it for free. And we also have this amazing video that will help you some more with Fusion. If you don't know me, my name's Casey and I teach Fusion. Can you tell? I hope, I hope you can tell. I hope that's obvious. Thanks for, thanks for being here. There's no coffee in this, but I thought there was.